now following the breaking news of explosions at the Brussels airport, CNN affiliate VTM says there were two blasts at the airport. Witnesses are telling another CNN affiliate, RTL, there are several wounded people and at least one of the explosions happened in the departure hall. They described blown out windows and this photo, we showed it to you earlier, this is from a person CNN has been in touch with. It shows smoke rising from the airport just a few moments ago and uh, we'll, we've now got Anthony Barrett uh, on the line now. He is an eyewitness. Uh, Anthony, talk to us about what you're seeing there, what you've witnessed so far at the airport in Brussels. Okay, well about eight o'clock local time I heard a couple of loud crumps. Uh, sounded like somebody moving furniture in the hotel room above me. Um, when I opened the curtains and looked out I could see uh, people fleeing the terminal building. Uh, the hotel I'm in is actually directly opposite the terminal building. I'm currently overlooking the side of the terminal building. Um, so far I've seen um, about 18 or 19 stretched casualties. Uh, in fact, there's more coming as I look out the window now, so we're probably up to about 19 or 20. Now, where, whereabouts are you? They've evacuated the area, is that right? And uh, where have they got people? At a safe distance there, presumably? Because uh, from, um, from watching this, no one knows if this is the end of the matter right now, do they? Uh, no, I think initially um, lots of people were just um, standing around. I say I'm in the hotel directly opposite the terminal building. Uh, there's only a road between us. Um, we haven't been evacuated or anything from the hotel. I guess it's safer in the hotel. Um, initially, after the explosions, there were lots of people down the side of the hotel with their trolleys, etc., who'd clearly um, uh, um, fled, for want of a better word, the, the terminal building. Um, latterly, the, the police and the security forces cleared everybody away. And now all I can see are actually casualties being taken to ambulances, not just on stretchers, but on luggage trolleys. Um, lots of ambulances uh, and obviously lots of security forces around. And, and the authorities, have they talked to people and described uh, what they need to do or have they given you any guidance at all in this situation or is it just all hands on deck trying to, to bring this situation to some sort of conclusion? Yeah, it's, uh, there certainly is uh, an awful lot of activity and as I'm talking to you now, I can see another five uh, people on stretchers being carried out. Um, I haven't had any information uh, from the uh, hotel about what's going on. Um, I guess I'm not surprised uh, by that. Um, and uh, um, it's, it's, well, it's, it's clearly a very serious incident. And what about, what, what are you seeing in terms of other people there? You're seeing, you, you initially saw 18 people on stretchers, now you're seeing five more people. That's a lot of people who have been hurt and wounded yeah, in the aftermath yeah. of these two explosions. What, what else are you seeing there? Well, as, I, as I'm talking to you now, literally, I can see another four people being taken away on stretchers. Um, clearly, they're coming from the, the main part of the terminal building and coming past the, the, the side of the terminal, and I can see them from my hotel room. And you were departing, were you? You were departing from the airport? So this happened in the departure hall, right? That's what we're hearing. It, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I've been in the hotel. I've been attending a conference. I'm, I'm due to fly home today. I guess that probably won't be happening. Um, and um, the, the, the hotel is, is very close to the, uh, uh, the terminal. It's, it's directly opposite. There's only a, a road in between. Uh, so I'm, I'm very close to see what's going on. There are still some, some um, passengers. I've just seen a couple with a child uh, walk past uh, down in front of the, uh, of the hotel. Um, I'm not sure if, if they know where they're going or whether they're being uh, uh, evacuated. Uh, from where I am now, I can see um, a man carrying somebody um, who looks uh, very injured. Anthony Barrett, thank you so much for joining us on the line there from the Brussels Brussels Airport. You're at the hotel there. We do appreciate your eyewitness report on the situation there at uh, the airport. We'll continue to follow this. Many thanks to you. We want to bring in now our senior international correspondent, Nema El Baga. We understand she is on her way to uh, the Brussels Airport. Nema, just describe to us the climate that these two explosions 
are taking place within. We know that details are elusive right now, but the, the country of Belgium is in the middle of a huge terror investigation at this moment. It is. It is in the middle of a, a, a very intense manhunt to try and track down the remnants of the, of the key conspiracies that were involved in the Paris attack. The threat level has been at level three, which is the second highest. But throughout the last few days, even after the capture of Salah Abdelham Errol, what authorities here have stressed to us repeatedly is that this isn't over yet. They maintain that there is a network that they believe Salah Abdel Salam, a new network that they believe Salah Abdel Salam was able to build around him. And as, as early as Sunday, the, the Belgian foreign minister was warning about the, uh, the intent of this new network to carry out attacks here in Belgium. And it's within that climate, it's within that context now that we're seeing these two explosions. We still have no confirmation from authorities that it is an attack, but it absolutely ratchets up the fear, the tension and the confusion here in Brussels that this is happening in a major European capital city. The authorities at the airport, we understand, have now initiated the emergency plans. Passengers are being evacuated onto runways. The pictures we're seeing just show real... Um, just real heartbreaking devastation, smashed glass, injured people. We, we are on our way there, Errol, and we'll update you as soon as we get on the scene. And just moments ago, Nema, we were speaking with a, a witness, a, a passenger who was at a hotel there at the airport, just describing in, in these past 20 minutes, dozens of uh, casualties, dozens of people injured being carried uh, past him on stretchers. He says there are ambulances there, there are security forces. Considering there is this massive terror investigation underway, what's likely to happen next here? What entity or entities uh, may, may take over jurisdiction of, of investigating this incident? Well, the next move will be the security meetings, which will uh, decide whether or not, if this is an attack, then they will be deciding whether or not to push the threat level up to four. Um, I, if it is an attack, then that would be the, the logical conclusion. That would be the next step because it would give the Belgian authorities the ability to move soldiers onto the streets to, to um, ask that the general public stay indoors. And we were here when that happened the first time, the first time since the Second World War, when it happened in the aftermath of the Paris attacks. And I have to tell you, Errol, it was a, a very, very difficult time for the, for the Belgian people. It, it, the streets were empty, people yes. were very yes. afraid, and authorities were insisting that they stay indoors. And if this is an attack, then we will likely see scenes like that unfolding again here. And Nema, talk to us a bit more about just the mood there in Belgium. Uh, you, you have your special series of reports we're focusing on this week, but you've been there a number of times, and we've underscored in the past few months just how terrifying it must be for people, particularly in the Molenbeek region, um, to know that there could be active terrorists uh, on the move. And now, this past week, we realize that the main suspect was there all along. To see something like this happen, and again, to remind our viewers, we do not know what caused these two blasts but for people in Belgium and generally in Europe how how are they likely to respond and feel uh, to an incident like this happening there is already a, a real uh, tension here I mean people obviously go go about their daily lives and uh, and live them out but there is also a, a, a background tension I think it's probably the best way okay. of describing it and a, a, a mistrust and confusion yeah. as to how Saleh Abd Salam one of Europe's most wanted men if not the most wanted man in Europe at the time was able to hide just a street away from his childhood home and what that says about the about the mistrust between authorities and these communities and the mistrust that it that engendered uh, the reality that where people in this community didn't feel able to come forward to authorities for whatever reason with his presence amongst them uh, and I think that is the conversation that has been playing out for years now here in Belgium this homegrown terror problem has plagued Belgium and the, the, the issues surrounding it of, of marginalization and the lack of integration on which the radical networks have fed for so many years. And these are the bigger questions that Belgian society and Belgium's government are asking themselves. Why Belgium again and again?
And uh, Nimmo, we are getting confirmation from the Brussels airport authorities that indeed there were these two explosions. We don't know the cause at this point, but we do know that a disaster plan is in place and people have been evacuated. It, it seems that that uh, took a little while to get that evacuation in place, but talk to us about just how well equipped authorities are there to deal with this. Well, the reality of the, uh, the threat level being at its second highest has meant that authorities have been very much on standby. So that will... All right, uh, clearly having some problems there with our communication with Neme Elbeger, who is uh, bringing us up to date on the latest on this breaking news, these two explosions at the airport there in Brussels and confirmation from the Brussels airport, a disaster plan is in place. People are being evacuated. You're looking at some still shots that we have on this. We do not know the cause of these two explosions at this point, but of course CNN will continue to follow this. Yeah. I'm Rosemary Church. And there's a number of uh, injuries and casualties there as well, so we will stay with this story. I'm Errol Barnett. In fact, our coverage of this breaking news from Brussels continues after this short break.